Hi, and welcome to Behind the Politics, a weekly podcast where we interview members of the Colorado Senate Democratic Caucus to learn more about their personal and political life. My name is Jill, and I'm here with my colleague, David. Hello. Today, we are joined by State Senator Daniel Kagan. Hi, Senator Kagan. Thanks for chatting with us. Well, I'm glad to be here. So, folks, Senator Kagan's district includes uh, a long list of towns, uh, Bomar, Littleton, Englewood, Sheridan, Greenwood Village, Cherry Hills Village, and parts of Aurora. He also happens to be my state senator. Uh, He was elected to the Senate in 2016 after serving eight years in the House. Uh, He currently sits on the Senate Judiciary Committee and was recently appointed to the Senate Finance Committee. So, Senator, uh, you have a really interesting uh, professional background story. We all know you're a former small business owner and a lawyer, but a lot of folks uh, may not know that you used to be a flight instructor. Uh, Where did you learn to fly, and what made you pursue a career in aviation? Well, uh... Flying has long been a passion of mine, and I originally learned my basic uh, flight uh, training in Kenya uh, in, uh, when I was very young, and uh, pursued it further in the UK, but uh, the bulk of my professional training came here in the US. And I always, I was absolutely fascinated by aviation. The technology uh, of aviation and the craft of uh, of piloting, uh, and uh, I pursued it with a passion. Wow, and uh, that's that's pretty great. Uh, are you st- are you still do you still fly occasionally? Or I haven't flown in a few years. Um, I sometimes toy with the idea of getting recurrent, uh, but uh, I haven't done it in a few years. It's uh, you know, I, I spent a long time uh, teaching uh, military pilots uh, upon retirement uh, from uh, the military life. Uh, I was training them onto civilian jet aircraft so that they could find employment. That was under the GI Bill. Uh, and uh, it was a, a wonderful experience. And speaking politically, it really showed me how uh, a government program uh, intersecting with the private sector because I was uh, not a member of the military armed forces but I was serving them uh, as a contractor and um, worked together wonderfully to reintegrate those uh, military pilots into civilian life and then later I taught uh, midshipmen at the US Naval Academy again under a civilian contract their basic flight training so they could find out which of them wanted to go on to Pensacola and uh, become naval aviators. Oh, that's cool. Uh, So would you say now that, you know, you've been a state representative and now a state senator, would you draw any parallels between legislating legislating and piloting? (laughs) (laughs) Well, uh, actually, there there are a few. You know, the same disciplines that are required for successfully completing uh, a flight the same attention to detail, pre-planning, making sure you know exactly how to get from where you are to where you want to arrive, uh, and that nothing goes wrong en route, and that everybody's working together, uh, are just as true in uh, aviation as they are in politics. Yes, there's a lot of coordination and pre-planning and careful execution involved in both. In piloting a bill, if you like, through the legislature, and piloting an aircraft through the sky. Wow. Um, so, for those of you that may not know, Senator Kagan has three kids, Ben, Sammy, and Abby. So, have any of your kids shown any interest in maybe following your footsteps and becoming a politician or becoming a pilot? Well, they're, they're all three of them, very, very interested, and I make sure that they uh, are informed uh, politically because I think that's important. And they're all, uh, they're all very interested in, in what's happening politically, not only in our Senate district, but, uh, but nationally and internationally as well. Um, and I'm pleased that they are. Uh, they are engaged young people. Um, I'm pleased about that. Now, as far as following me into aviation, no. I have uh, dragged them into the sky on several occasions, um, but they show no inclination whatsoever to uh, to learn to fly themselves or to pursue any 
career in that direction. I their interests lie <laughs> elsewhere. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I can, I can sympathize with that. I'm really terrible with heights, so I'm not very good at <laughs> flying either, so I can understand. So, I mean, what are your kids' interests or, you know, what kind of careers have they decided to pursue? Well, they haven't decided what kind of careers, or at least my younger two have not decided what kinds of careers to pursue finally. Um, my, uh, my son is uh, currently working for Zillow, you know, the real estate uh, organization, and uh, he's, he's doing very well and making his way through, through that process. Uh, and uh, he's fascinated by uh, information technology, and of course that's the perfect place for him to learn more about it and, uh, and contribute uh, his talents to that uh, field. Um, now my, uh, my daughter is just about to start college. My younger daughter is just about to start college and she has no idea what she wants to do. Absolutely <laughs> not. Uh, she's interested in so many things um, but she has no idea. And that's one of the beauties of the American system. You don't have to commit early uh, to a career path. You know, in some places, you have to commit basically at the age of 16. In England, where I grew up, uh, you had to decide what A-levels you were going to do at the age of 16, and that pretty much tracked your career path for life. And you had to make that fateful, lifelong decision at that very early age. And I'm glad we don't have to do that here. Um, but uh, Abby uh, is, uh, she thoroughly enjoys creating anything to do with food, whether it be baking, whether it be cooking, whether it be preparing. She's just uh, fabulous at that. And she spends all her free time watching these cooking shows and cooking competitions. Uh, she's very enthused about that. Oh, wow. And uh, uh, my uh, middle child, uh, Samantha, Sammy, we call her. Uh, Sammy's very outdoorsy and athletic. So, very. They cool. all they all have different uh, tendencies. Sounds like you're very very proud of them. I am very very <laughs> proud of them. They're much better kids than I deserve. <laughs> well, and uh, so and just to kind of wrap up, uh, you know, there's a fun question we were going to we ask all of our guests. Um, what is the most embarrassing thing that has happened to you in the Capitol? <laughs> <laughs> the most embarrassing thing? Well, I suppose it was pretty embarrassing when I accidentally referred to the President of the Senate as Mr. Speaker. And he thought this was uh, particularly outrageous. He doesn't <laughs> like it when you call him Mr. Chairman, but he especially didn't respond well to be <laughs> addressed as Mr. Speaker. And... Uh, uh, I was promptly removed from the podium by two burly Republican senators in jest, I hate <laughs> um, And it was all recorded on video for the world to see as I was dragged away from the podium. So I suppose that was uh, uh, somewhat embarrassing. I, I seem to recall uh, after that, there was a, a public uh, trial, as it were, uh, led by actually Senator Donovan. Uh, she read a poem of some kind. Hmm. Yes. Um, did she? I don't remember that. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe you blacked it out. Yes. Right. Yeah. <laughs> it was so uh, it was post-traumatic uh, amnesia. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. oh. um, well, that about does it for today. Thanks for chatting with us, Senator Kagan. Well, thank you for allowing me to. It's been a pleasure. Um, and thank you for listening. We'll be back next week with State Senator Rachel Zenzinger. <laughs>